The Arrowverse has been going on for 20 seasons now, and each one of these seasons has a main villain. Without fail, except for once, these main villains always die at some point or another. The only villain who has never died is Slade Wilson aka Deathstroke. He isn't the only main villain that is still alive, but he is the only main villain who has never had a death scene or a death. This video will count fake death scenes, or at least the ones that happen at the end of the season that are supposed to be the death scenes, and uh, anybody who was erased from existence at the end of their seasons, that counts as well as well as deaths that happen in a, either a different season of the show, like afterwards, or maybe on a different show entirely. If they've ever been the main villain and they die, they will be counted in this video. So let's begin with number 22. I'm counting Black Flash because he is technically Zoom, and Zoom was the main villain at some point, and I don't think you could really get stupider than this. Black Flash is supposed to be the physical embodiment of death for speedsters, and he was destroyed by a single frost blast from Killer Frost. I mean, I, I, come on, and to add insult to injury, Savitar's line, the one thing that Black Flash can't fight cold, it's just so damn stupid, and it's kind of insulting to not only the lore of the Flash and the Speed Force, but to the character of both Zoom and Black Flash as well. Now, actually, this one was not confirmed whether or not he died, but the fact that they never mention him afterwards as, like, a prisoner and he never appears again, I'm gonna guess that he did die here, which means that he died to a single heat vision blast from another Kryptonian, which I don't think should be possible for a Kryptonian powered by the sun to be powered by heat or to be killed by heat, especially one, a, a single blast from another Kryptonian, which actually didn't have a, a lot of force because it was being pushed against his own blast. Afterwards, Kara just literally walks away after killing him barely acknowledging it, it's such a stupid moment and such a weird way to kill off your main villain. Remember I thought of everything, even this moment. Goodbye, my love. There is debate about whether or not this is the death for the Thinker, or when Ralph retook his body, if that was the death. I'm counting this here because the Thinker has been more about his mind than his body, and if you see when he is being uh, taken over by Ralph, he puts his mind, or at least a part of his consciousness, into the chair, so I'm taking this as his actual death, and this is just an incredibly underwhelming way for the Thinker to be taken out, just by Marley's taking his consciousness out of the chair. I mean, Devo didn't even try to stop her, and it was just such an underwhelming moment for the main villain to be defeated in that way. The fact that Savitar took as long as he did to be erased from existence after failing to kill Iris makes no sense when you compare it to how long it took Reverse Flash twice and Cicada version 2 to be erased from existence, and even worse than that, the fact that a speedster was essentially killed by a gunshot while he was running faster than a speeding bullet, I might add, makes absolutely no sense. I also hate how they stage all of this, with Barry turning around, walking towards Cisco and Caitlyn as slowly as he can, basically asking Savitar to kill him. I hate it when they did that. They did it actually twice in season three that I can remember, and I it looked it looked, just looked so stupid. Savitar is probably the most hated death scene for any main villain ever, but I think he is number 19 because 2021 and 22 are just a little bit stupider. Finish it off, John. Gladly. I don't see this good morning. Take off. This death was just really, really stupid. Tricking Neuron out of Ray's body was fine, but the fact that Constantine was able to destroy Neuron with just a short, simple spell is laughable, and it makes me wonder why Neuron was ever even a threat at all. I wanted 
to be a queen. Amiko's turn to siding with Oliver came out of nowhere and was completely out of character, and that led to her death that also came out of nowhere was not only very unsatisfying for the season and the character, but they also try to play it off as really sad because she is Oliver's sister, and I guess she just turned to the light side, which really didn't work because of the fact that it came out of nowhere and was completely out of character, and Amiko just didn't deserve that emotion in the slightest. I knew I chose well with you, boy. I really don't like this death because of one, Rachel Ghoul is a much better fighter than Oliver and either shouldn't lose to him or if he let Oliver win, which I think he might have, he shouldn't have been so stupid to think that Oliver would have actually took a, taken over his role. And secondly, the fact that Oliver killed one of the, the biggest Batman villains ever, either before Batman ever met him or before we ever saw Batman met, meet him or at all, just really bothers me. And I had a choice. This time I don't. I get what they did here with uh, Damien being killed in the same way Laurel was, and in that sense, I guess it works, with Laurel uh, being stabbed by an arrow by Damien, and then Damien being stabbed by also an arrow in probably the same place, but outside of the fact that it's kind of poetic in that way, it really doesn't work, because Laurel's death was not only really stupid, but also really anticlimactic in the way she was stabbed, it really seemed like she could survive that, and the fact that she did for a while, on top of that, the fight that this, kid, this uh, death came after was really, really bad. This death was a little bit too convoluted and didn't really make much sense. On top of that, the, the fact that both Heatwave and White Canary were able to defeat Vandal Savage basically by themselves, and the fact that Vandal Savage, who was one of the most formidable villains in the DC Universe, was defeated not once, not twice, but three times in the span of a couple minutes of screen time, that really bothers me. That being said, I would be lying if it wasn't incredibly satisfying to see Vandal Savage defeated and killed, and the actual moment with the music in the background it definitely is pretty cool and it's a lot better than all of the deaths under it. Please. Save me. Like you said, I would say that this is actually a pretty satisfying death for Rhea, despite the fact that it doesn't really make much sense. I mean, how would breathing something poisonous turn you to dust? That makes absolutely no sense to me. But anyway, I think it's not the worst death at all. This death is definitely a little bit too similar to Zoom's for comfort with demon-like creatures taking them away after they were defeated by the main hero, and this is just basically a worse version of that death where it doesn't really lead to anything interesting, where Zoom becomes Black Flash, Rain just dies or disappears forever. I think they really should have just went for a regular death for Rain that would have, in my opinion, been a lot cooler, and I don't love the death, but again, it's better than the rest I've mentioned so far. This death kind of comes out of nowhere, and looking back on it, I can't really tell why Amiko killed Diaz other than to get Laurel to investigate Yami Amiko to push the main storyline of the season. I honestly can't remember. It was definitely a weird way to kill Diaz, and I really think Diaz should have been killed either on purpose or by accident by Oliver in the Slapside Redemption just to make that whole thing so much more satisfying. That being said, I definitely was pretty happy to see Diaz die, and this was a pretty crazy way to end this episode and end Diaz as a character.
We both know, no matter how much you despise me, you're not ruthless enough to pull that trigger. Going into the top 10, I realized that there's not a lot of great main villain death scenes in the Arrowverse, and most of them are not very good, it's to the point where number 10, I don't really like it that much, it's really number 9 to 1 that I do think are pretty good, number 10 for Lex Luthor, I don't like the fact that Lex Luthor was killed at all, even if the Monitor did bring him back, for for one, that, that, that does kind of create some continuity issues, how does the Monitor bring someone back if he wasn't able to save Barry and Kara back in Elseworlds with the multiverse thing and the, the balance or whatever? but also I don't feel like Lex Luthor is the type of villain who should ever die except for if it's like in the future or something that being said this moment definitely works in the actual moment of it all and it definitely serves to uh, push Alina to the dark side which I kind of like and it works to fit Lex Luthor into Crisis on Infinite Earths bringing it to the top 10 even though I don't like the fact that Lex Luthor was killed at all This death works really well because of what we know is coming next, making the actual moment pretty intense. I wouldn't say it's the most satisfying death of a villain, and the fact that it's not only the third time in the Flash that a main dev villain has been erased from existence, but actually the fourth time in the Arrowverse, I still do like the moment because of the intensity of it all and what it's leading, leading up to, and I think it also looks pretty cool. teaching me what I'm fighting for. While not technically a death, Oliver stabbing Merlin through his own chest was definitely a great way to end this fight and the main rivalry between these two characters, and I think if Merlin had died here, it would have been a great ending and death scene for this villain, and it would have been a great ending to the character. He didn't die, however, which had some uh, bad things and good things about it, but I do think this was a good death scene nonetheless, even if it wasn't an actual death. Go! Get her out of here! Go! No. The season built Dark Up as a much more compelling and likable character to the point where he, when he died, it was actually pretty sad this time and it genuinely really worked for the character and I think it was a great satisfying ending to the character and finishing up his redemption arc that he had that he had in the season. Again, he wasn't the villain of the season at all, but he was the main villain of Arrow Season 4 and I think his death here is not only way, way better, but it is actually pretty damn good. Like this? Kind of ass back whose strategy is that? Let me show you. Getting back to Malcolm Merlin, while the season 1 death I think would have been a perfect way to end the villain as how he was in season 1, I think the season 5 death was the perfect way to end his character how he was from season 2 to 5, including Legend of Tomorrow season 2. The scene where he saved Thea, he gave up his own life to, th to save Thea, it definitely was very fitting for the character and it definitely served as a great ending to what they've been trying to do with Merlin ever since season 2 and it was actually a pretty sad scene in the actual episode. I mostly like this because of the fact that I think it really works for the season-long storyline and what we've been told about Mullis and what they, they've been calling the Six, the totems that they're used to create Bebo and kill Mullis. The CGI for this fight is awesome, it's a very satisfying death for Mullis, and I just really think it is a great death and a great ending to this season. I've controlled your life for so long, Barry. How will you get along without me? So 
Sean being erased from existence was a pretty ballsy way to end the season. Eddie killing himself, in my opinion, was not a very sad death, but it definitely worked as a very climactic ending to the fight between Flash and Reverse Flash, as well as the entire season. I also love the quote from Reverse Flash where he says, he's been controlling Barry's life for so long, how will you live without me? I love that line so much, and I love the ending to the character, at least in this season. As opposed to Malcolm Merlin, I would not have been happy if this was the ending to the character. Thankfully, it definitely wasn't, and we got to see this character so much more, even die in a very, very similar way a couple years later. The second time Reverse Flash was erased from existence actually works better than the first because of how they incorporate Black Flash here and how not being erased from existence was basically Thawne's entire motivation in the season making it a lot more satisfying when he actually does get quote unquote erased from existence yet again and I doubt it's going to be the last time he either dies or gets erased from existence. Zoom being taken away by Time Wraiths was a great way and a Zoom being taken away by Time Wraiths was a pretty great and very climactic way to end the season, but I mean, I think it's pretty awesome, I think it's insanely awesome how they incorporated the Black Flash character into this universe through the other Black Speedster here with Hunter Solomon, aka Zoom, and when I say Black, I mean his costume and his ultimate demise, I think it looks really cool, I love how they incorporated the lore of the Speed Force into all of this with the Black Flash, and I think it's such an awesome way that they ended this character and this villain, or at least for the first time. Without mom and Felicity. No, Adrian! I don't love putting Arrow Season 5 on the top of all these lists because the lists do become a little predictable, but I mean who else and what else than the death scene for Adrian Chase could be at the top of this list. Adrian's death was definitely the most intense out of all the deaths in this list. Adrian killing himself to set off all the bombs that would blow up Lee and Yu to get his final revenge on Oliver and prove that everything Oliver touches dies. This was such an awesome way to end the villain, the storyline, the episode, and the season, and is without a doubt the greatest villain death ever in the Arrowverse and is in general just one of the greatest moments in the Arrowverse ever as well. So that is my list. Let me know yours in the comments down below and if you like this video make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe and thanks for watching.